so next is the uh, gastrointestinal stromal tumors and it's uh, v10 54 year old male present with previous history of hematemesis under an endoscope is found to have a large submucosal tumor in the stomach what is the most likely diagnosis the most common tumor in this setting is just gastrointestinal stromal tumors it's a uh, Typically, biopsy do not help diagnose the biopsy are mucosal, so just are of mesial common origin and form soft tissue sarcoma. They comprise less than three percent of the GIT tumors. And their most common sites are stomach, small bowel, sphagnus mesentery, and large bowel. The median age at uh, presentation is 58 years, and presentation is incidental in approximately one third, but up to 50 percent patient present with the upper GI bleed. GI bleed, not upper GI, GI bleed. And how would you investigate this patient? A uh, CT scan allows the site of origin to be determined as well as the presence of distant mats. CT scan, a full staging CT chest and pelvis is usually performed for large tumors and this aids uh, surgical planning. And endoscopic endoscopy typically finds a hypogenic uh, mass, continuous muscular propria, muscular mucosae, and uh, small to less than a centimeter with outline are most likely to behave in benign. Uh, endoscope guide uh, endo ultrasound scan guided fine needle aspiration or core biopsy are usually diagnostic. There is no concern over breaching surgical resection plans. The most useful application of PET CT scanning is to determine the present response of unresectable or metastatic gist to imatinib. What factors determine the potential malignancy of gist? Tumor size and metotic fields. So if tumor size is less than 2 cm, very low risk, more than 10 cm, very high risk. Metodic count uh, less than 5 is low risk, more than 10 is high risk. Uh, about 10 to 30 percent of the patients are uh, are overtly malignant at presentation with the principal side of the mat being the liver and the peritoneal cavity. Lymph nodes are very rarely, so it go to the liver and peritoneal cavity. What are the treatment options? So UK guidelines recommend that small asymptomatic incidental gist may be observed as long as there is no change in the size of serial scanning over one to two years. One number two, large symptomatic gist should be resected, but only if complete resection can be achieved with negative resection margin R0. It is vitally important that the tumor not be ruptured during surgery as this or the positive resection margin leads to a dramatic reduction in the survival. N block resection should be performed if the adjacent organs are involved. In stomach, depending on size and size of the gist, an R0 resection may involve partial, subtotal, or total gastrectomy. However, a wedge or sleeve resection can be utilized to preserve as much stomach as possible. For small tumor, this may be performed laparoscopically. Palliative surgery may have a role in selected patient for the alleviation of symptoms. Unresectable metastatic gist can be treated with imatinib. What is the mechanism of action of the imatinib? So, over 90% of the gist has expressed tyrosine kinase receptor kit. Um, imatinib is an oral tyrosine kinase receptor inhibitor and uh, inhibits the tyrosine kinase kit on gist cells leading to the inactivation of cell proliferation and promotion of apoptosis. These kinases are not present in normal cells. Huge response rates of over 80% were seen after introduction of imatinib and more than 50% of the patient with unfavorable muscles will survive more than 5 years. It is also less often for a given treatment in resected high risk gist as it improves the disease free survival and overall survival. The starting dose is 400 mg per day. Thank you.